At the end of this past season, I revisited the 2023 NBA Draft and assigned grades to each of the lottery picks one year later based on how they performed. After seeing how they fit with their new teams and how well they mesh on the court, opinions definitely change compared to what was being said on draft night, and the longer their careers go on, the more clear it becomes how good these picks really were. This is why we're doing what we're doing in today's video, as we will now be going back to the 2022 NBA Draft class and we'll be grading every lottery pick two years later. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. Starting with the first pick in the draft, the Orlando Magic selected Paolo Bancaro, and the grade two years later is an A+. Bancaro is blossoming into a legitimate franchise cornerstone, already being named an all-star in his second season, and at the time of the draft, it legitimately wasn't clear if he would be the first name off the board. The fact that the Magic surprised some people by taking him there, and then for him to prove to be an all-star caliber guy so early on, completely justifies the selection and earns him the highest grade possible of an A+. Bancaro masterfully uses his size and strong frame to overwhelm defenders, and his crafty footwork makes him tough to stop when he gets around the basket, so as long as his three-point shot continues to improve, he'll be a lethal scorer for quite a while. Next, with the second pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder selected Chet Holmgren, and the grade here two years later is an A. Another very strong selection from this draft in hindsight, as Holmgren did miss the entire first year of his career due to injury, but came back last season and did not miss a beat. He proved to immediately be one of the best interior defenders in the league from the get-go, ranked in the top five of the league in blocks per game, put up 17 points and 8 rebounds a night, and reliably spaced the floor as a three-point shooter as a big man as well. His presence opens up so much for a young Thunder team that are proving they can compete with anybody after finishing as the one seed in the Western Conference. Next, with the third pick, the Houston Rockets selected Jabari Smith Jr., and the grade here two years later is a B. Smith Jr. is a very versatile defender who serves as a glue guy in the Rockets lineup, but offensively, he has not been nearly as polished as the team probably hoped he would be on offense at this point. His scoring output barely improved from year one to year two. He's barely a league average shooter efficiency-wise after shooting the lights out in college, and his ability to create his own shot off the dribble is also minimal. He's looking more like a really good role player than a star, which is fine, but after being selected number three overall, a B grade is as high as I can go for that type of thing. Next, with the fourth pick, the Sacramento Kings selected Keegan Murray, and the grade here two years later is a B+. Murray came out of the gates as a rookie shooting the lights out, but then this year reverted back closer to league average shooting efficiency-wise. Unlike with Smith Jr., I have more faith in Keegan Murray's ability to knock down shots at a high rate because he has shown that he can do it countless times, and when he heats up, he can really fill it up the, from the three-point line. In the Kings lineup, he's just out there to space the floor and defend hard, and he does do those things pretty well. Next, with the fifth pick, the Detroit Pistons selected Jaden Ivey, and the grade here two years later is a B-. Through two years, Ivy has had flashes of promise, but the team is still struggling to find a consistent role for him, which is a bit concerning. His production on paper is by no means bad, but his scoring dipped from 16 points per game as a rookie to 15 per game in year two, his efficiency scoring the ball did not improve from the below average rate it was at, and his fit next to Cade Cunningham is not the greatest either, which only makes it harder for them to commit to him. Next, with the sixth pick, the Indiana Pacers selected Benedict Matherin, and the grade here two years later is a B. Matherin exploded early on in his rookie season scoring the basketball, but then as time has gone on, he steadily reverted back to the mean, and now seems to be an average scoring threat best suited for a sixth man role. This, of course, is still pretty good for a mid-lottery pick, but his ceiling is definitely capped. He's going to be a 15 to 20 point scorer most years in his career, with fluctuating efficiency and tons of hot and cold stretches, which is the typical story for a sixth man anyway. 
Next, with the seventh pick, the Portland Trailblazers selected, Shaden Sharp and the grade here two years later is also a B. Sharp was a mystery when he was drafted because he never actually played a game at Kentucky in college, but his explosive athleticism and innate scoring ability tantalized scouts, and through two seasons, we've definitely seen the flashes of greatness on occasion, but injuries held him back from fully breaking out this past year, so he's still got room to grow. I'm still a big believer in his talent, but we need to see more from him on a consistent basis before he earns a better grade than a B. Next, with the 8th pick, the New Orleans Pelicans selected Dyson Daniels and the grade here two years later is a C. Daniels definitely serves a role on the floor as a well-balanced role player that can give you some secondary playmaking skills while also defending pretty hard, but the truth is, his offensive game as a whole is way underdeveloped for the investment that the Pelicans used on him as a top 10 pick, and now he's a member of the Atlanta Hawks because the Pelicans included him in the trade that they did to acquire DeJounte Murray. Next, with the ninth pick, the San Antonio Spurs selected Jeremy Sohan, and the grade here two years later is a C+. Sohan has been experimented with quite a bit through two seasons, sometimes even in a point-forward type of role, but while he may be capable of giving you a little bit of everything, he's not really that good at any one thing in particular. He's a good defender, but offensively, he's an inefficient scorer with decent court vision, he doesn't space the floor, and he's not that crafty around the rim either. Next, with the 10th pick, the Washington Wizards selected Johnny Davis, and the grade here two years later is an F. Davis was supposed to be one of the most naturally gifted scoring talents in the class, but two years later he has easily been the worst selection in the entire draft. He's spent a majority of his time down in the G League, he's been horribly inefficient both inside and out in the minutes that he's gotten at the NBA level, and he can barely see the court on a consistent basis because of how bad he's been in his opportunities, so the Wizards already seem to be on the brink of giving up on him after using a top 10 pick on him just two years ago. Next, with the 11th pick, the New York Knicks selected Usman Jang, then traded him to the Oklahoma City Thunder on draft night, and the grade two years later is a D. Jang was a very raw talent when they selected him, and two years later, he's pretty much been left behind in their pecking order due to how fast the team around him has developed into a capable contender. The Thunder no longer have the patience to bring him along at a reasonable rate because they are in win-now mode, which doesn't mesh well with a project who needs the freedom to make mistakes to truly grow. Next, with the 12th pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder had another pick, selecting Jalen Williams, and the grade here is an A+. With back-to-back -back selections, the Thunder made up for it by absolutely nailing the pick here, finding a borderline all-star at the end of the lottery in Jalen Williams. Williams is a true two-way stud who can defend multiple positions, create off the dribble, knock down 43% of his threes, and put up a highly efficient 19 points per game, which should continue to grow over time. He's only going to get better and better, and is a big reason why the Thunder have been able to emerge as quickly as they have. Next, with the 13th pick, the Detroit Pistons selected Jalen Duran, and the grade two years later is a B. Duran is incredibly athletic for a center, he grabs a ton of rebounds, and offensively he has nice touch around the basket catching lobs and operating as an efficient role man in the pick and roll. He definitely needs to improve as a defender to really emerge as the high-end starting center he could be, but for now, there has definitely been a lot of good coming from him. And finally, with the last pick of the lottery, the Cavaliers selected Ochai Abaji, then traded him to the Utah Jazz on draft night, and the grade two years later is a C-. Abaji's appeal at the time was the fact that he was expected to be one of the draft's most premier sharpshooters from three, but through two seasons, he has been the furthest thing from that. As a rookie, he knocked down an average 35% of his three-point shots, but then this past season he regressed hard, making just 29% of his threes, which is not good enough for a player that doesn't impact the game that much elsewhere. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about this draft class two years later. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.